Good morning, folks. Trying something new, getting everyone on the same page moving forward. If you haven't seen Energy from Space or Part 2 listed below, you're going to be lost. Watching both background videos takes about 15 minutes. Latest IRIS mission, delayed in launch until tonight, will be on live TV and many NASA scientists are expecting to see the unexpected when they analyze the interface region. Electric Universe proponents here will likely be less surprised. Interesting news out of France, the Corot satellite damaged in November 2012 by solar plasma is officially unrecoverable. will be set to re-enter the atmosphere for a fiery demise to be announced later. If you are bored, officials are asking for our help with tropical cyclone pattern recognition. This is very cool if you get a chance to follow the link I've provided. Tropical storm south of Mexico unbelievably with another developing behind him. This is odd because the Pacific was supposed to be quiet versus the Atlantic. The Atlantic's only storm so far trekked across Central America from the Pacific, and this would make number four off the west coast. New Zealand taking that rain as expected. Southeast Australian coastline's going to get it next. Power low in Europe still stalled and bringing storms all the way north now to Finland. Major stories in the U.S. as I share Weather Online's expert weather charts. First, the low in the east is a trash bin for heat, moisture, and energy. Severe watches tonight are widespread. Also notice this huge low stuck south of Alaska. For those who didn't catch the arc storm discussion, look it up for your edification, but use this spelling with the AR standing for atmospheric river. Last but not least in the U.S., there is nothing in the desert, and no man needs nothing. The drought that goes beyond extreme to the classification of exceptional is about to take a shot spreading further west through Arizona. These areas aren't exactly tropical rainforests, but they are drier than usual, and a powerful high-pressure cell settling in will keep the rain out. Ramp temperatures near 130 degrees Fahrenheit, yes, almost to 130, and it will extend the drought. Second gamma burst in two days. This one came from near the celestial equator in the Serpens constellation. If you're looking for a celestial reference, sunrise in the east currently heralds setting of serpents in the west. Flaring is really making us maunder type shutdown slash ice age trend proponents look good, eh? Forgive my jest. I do indeed lament the lack of flaring continuing to not expand our atmosphere. Good polarity here, but she needs to develop. Solar wind is quiet. Density calm in orange with speed fading in yellow. No magnetic disturbances at all, but expect solar wind to get a bit feisty soon from the coronal hole stream already on its way to Earth. Speaking of which, I've had many questions as to why there's no watch with this coronal hole. Well, first of all, the day the hole crept center disk, we did take that 6.4 in the North Atlantic. But since June 21st, there has been no significant geocentricity. That doesn't end until July 1st. And also, as I just stated, there's no geomagnetic instability or energetic flux. And the umbral field has also been shut since that quake. Clearly, as the coronal hole stream arrives, planets come together, and the northern coronal hole faces Earth, we will have another shot at a better watch. But transequatorial alone is not enough. Until then, minor focus on Indonesia taking the two biggest quakes of the day within miles of one another and make this two above average quakes from the U.S. Washington on top this morning. Got a plasma tornado on the sun to show you, incoming active regions, and some other stellar shots. Eyes open. No fear at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.